welcome back to my channel. My name is Adam James, and for those of you who don't know, I studied plastics and composites engineering and specialize in consumer product design for mass manufacturing, have years of experience with 3D printers, uh, injection molding machines, and CAD engineering software. In this episode, I'd like to highlight my top five most useful 3D prints in 2020. My previous episodes have focused more so on Fusion 360, but that's not all this channel will be about. If you're interested in learning more about Fusion 360 and the CAD software that I use day to day for startup and hobbyist use, feel free to check out my other videos on my channel and I'll include a link in the description below to Fusion 360 as well. Fusion 360 is free for hobbyist use and I personally recommend it. For my top five most useful 3D prints, I'm going to rate these on a rating system that I have come up with based on three different factors. These factors include uh, one, usability, uh, aka how often you use the product that's been printed. Two, the cost to make. Uh, the cost will be based on the cost per gram of filament. Uh, links below to the filaments I recommend for each application uh, will be included. And then the time to print. Each of these variables will be rated on a scale from one to five. Uh, one being the least ideal and five being the best. The best score one of these prints could get is 15. So for example, a print that you use every day, aka a high usability score, um, costs almost nothing to make uh, a high cost score and takes almost no time to print, a high time to print score will get a 3D print rating of 15. Please note all of these 3D print files are available for free on Thingiverse.com and I'll be giving credit to the designers uh, in the links below as well as when I call out the product designs uh, associated with them. Remember, the title of the video is Top 5 Most Useful 3D Prints, so we need to focus more so on the usability score, but figured including cost and time in there as well is good for reference. Now we'll start with the prints that have the lowest sum to begin with and we'll end the video with the best or the top rated prints, right? Uh, this here is a hand towel holder. Uh, our bathroom actually at this house did not have a hand towel holder so I figured it'd be nice to 3D print one and I didn't want to take the time to design this product uh, so found one on Thingiverse, uh, the links below. While I'm talking, I'm also going to probably include a, a short video of the product actually being used. So this is the product itself. It's a really, really simplistic design, but in terms of usability, I gave it a rating of five. Since printing this out about a month ago uh, and replacing or actually installing the hand towel holder just with some con command strips, uh, I use it every day, right? How often do you use a hand towel? Um, after you've either used the restroom, I would like to think every day, <laughs> right? So usability gets a five. Cost to make, this took up 158 grams of filament. I printed it with PLA because it's not being exposed to UV light and it's being kept indoors and is generally not being susceptible to hard loading conditions or intense loading conditions, right? This is a hand towel. Uh, so PLA was the filament of choice here. Um, at five cents per gram, the total came out to seven dollars and ninety cents to print this. Uh, now, generally, I can get filament for pretty cheap, uh, but this is just a Google search for cost per gram of filament um, based on the type of material. So we're just going to use these standards throughout the video, but you might be able to make it cheaper based on our rating system. Uh, that is a two. Anything from six to eight dollars uh, gets a two. Uh, and the time to print, this thing took uh, 33 hours and 11 minutes. So over a day. Uh, and how did I print this? It was like this. So I'll maybe include a time lapse to the 3D print as well. Um, but 33 hours and 11 minutes, and according to my 3D print rating system, that gets a one out of five. Uh, and totaling all these up for usability, cost to make, and time to print, uh, this print gets an eight. But usability, superb. Use this thing every day. 
Moving on to our next uh, most useful 3D print is this Shower Music Mate. Now it says Kitsune on the back here. Uh, again, I will link uh, the product designer down below uh, and give them a shout out. So this is called the Shower Music Mate. And you essentially put your phone in here and there's some speaker amplification slots at the bottom and you hang it over say your shower door and music projects out that way and it actually works really well uh, it, it does make the music louder it's a sound enhancer it's got some protective shielding for the water this little hinge here was actually in my most recent video the STL files in Diffusion 360 so if you'd like to understand how to modify STLs from Thingiverse like this to compensate for your shower door thickness uh, go ahead and click on that uh, link and check that video out as well. But usability, definitely give this a five. Uh, every single day, I like listening to music in the shower. It's just maybe that's just me, but you just plop your phone in and it just sits there, it just sits there all day. This was printed out of PLA, so the cost to make was at the end five cents per gram. Uh, it took up 93 grams of filament, so the total came to four dollars and sixty-five cents to print this uh, entire two-component assembly. So on our rating system from one to five for cost to make, I gave it a three um, time to print. This took over a day as well, uh, 25 hours and 18 minutes. I'll include a time lapse of this print as well. Um, so I gave it a one. So print score is nine. If I was to do this again, I would probably print it out of PETG just because uh, PETG is better for water-based applications. Again, PLA and ABS are hygroscopic, um, so maybe not the best, but we'll see how it holds up, right? Uh, I've been using this for at least three weeks now and seems to be doing great. Next, we've got this shoe support wall mount, and I will uh, probably overlay a video of how these actually work because it's not very intuitive when just seeing these um, products in person or even over video. Uh, but essentially, you put your shoe in like this and mount it to a wall and it holds up. Uh, and it works pretty well. But as you can see, um, if you keep this for a long period of time, especially with vans like this, um, which are made of canvas and the toe box, uh, it might leave some indents there, but um, nothing too big, not a big deal. Um, for athletic shoes, it's not a problem. Um, but in terms of usability, definitely a five out of five. Uh, use this every day. Um, everybody has shoes. Most everybody has a wall. <laughs> of course, less people have a 3D printer to actually manufacture this themselves. So I gave it a five out of five for usability. In terms of cost to make on a scale from one to five, again, uh, both of these uh, or the total amount of material combined for both of these is 43 grams uh, at five cents a gram again this is made out of PLA uh, that's two dollars and fifteen cents so I gave it a four out of five now time to print um, to print both both of these it took ten hours and nine minutes which is pretty long so anything above eight hours I gave it a one um, so that got a one out of five so totaling all those up we've got ten out of fifteen uh, for the shoe support wall mount. So coming up next, we have the backpack buckle. Now this one's been interesting because, in fact, I've got some other failed prototypes here. As you can see, this one's made out of ABS. This one's made out of PLA. Uh, and they both snapped. Actually, all of them snapped. Um, and what I realized is that the stress concentration is happening at these edges and I was tending to print them laying down on the bed like this with the layer height going up. Um, so I actually reoriented the latest revision like this. So the layer heights or the layers are going perpendicular to the height of the component. Uh, and that actually helped with this stress concentration on the edges. Uh, and as you can see, it works really well. I actually use these for our hot tub in the backyard uh, because a couple of the clips broke uh, and a link to the Thingiverse file is down below. Um, usability, 
don't use this every day. I gave it a four. Uh, cost to make on a scale from one to five, again, uh, it took 18 grams of filament to print this entire assembly at five cents per gram. That's 90 cents, so that's between zero to two dollars, so I gave it a five. Um, in terms of time to print, it only took five hours and 16 minutes, which isn't too bad for 3D printing. Uh, if you're relatively new, that's not too bad. <laughs> um, so I gave it a three out of five. Uh, so total print score out of 15, it gets a 12. Now, it should be noted that if this is gonna be used in a hot application, like, or stay in the sun for a long period of time to prevent warpage, um, I would definitely print this with an ABS material like this. Uh, but if you're gonna use it on a backpack or it has limited exposure to UV light uh, and low temperature applications, PLA should do just fine. All right, now <laughs> my favorite or most useful 3D print of 2020 uh, comes in as the steering column phone mount. Now it's just these two little frame components. Uh, I actually put these uh, adhesive, uh, 3M adhesive on the bottom and it essentially, let's see if I can grab my phone. Uh, I'll overlay a video of how this actually works. Uh, but you just insert your phone uh, and mount it on the dash like this. And it, it works surprisingly well. And I can back, I'm, I'm gonna back this up with a little bit of data. So 91.3% um, of households in the US have access to vehicles, right? Uh, and According to another Google search, 81% of Americans own smartphones, which have access to a GPS system, which you would be most likely to mount this on your dash or your steering column uh, to use, right? That's, I, I would hope that's why you're mounting your phone up to look at it, not maybe, you know, Netflix or YouTube, or um, hopefully you're not watching this video while using the steering column phone mount. Um, but if we based our data on the Google search data trends that I had just mentioned, then we get about a 3.69 out of five. Um, but we'll round that out as we're not being super exact with any of these uh, scores here and we'll give it a four out of five for usability. In terms of cost to make, this, both of these combined only took eight grams of uh, ABS material. I printed this with ABS because the dash of your car, especially in California, gets really, really hot, like very hot. I left uh, one of my 3D printed components in the car uh, just yesterday and it warped completely. Uh, I'm printing it right now. It's probably what you hear in the background. Um, so cost to make, eight grams. Multiply that by five cents per gram uh, because generic ABS and PLA cost the same according to Google. Um, so we get 40 cents for this entire assembly, 40 cents to mount your, uh, your phone to your dash. Now, granted, that doesn't include the 3M adhesives. Um, so we're not including those. This is simply just the plastic uh, and the cost to 3D print these. Uh, so cost to make, give it a five, five out of five. Now time to print two hours and 31 minutes. We were we had some prints which were what, 33 hours and 25 hours over a day. So imagine that in two hours and 31 minutes, you could grab this, put some 3M on and put it on your dash and actually have a usable product that you could use every single day while driving. That's pretty cool. Uh, so print score, I gave this 13 out of 15. Super cool print. Uh, again, I will link the maker uh, to, and Thingiverse down below. Definitely check it out. Uh, again, all these files are available to 3D print. Uh, and then if you'd like to see some of my uh, personal 3D printed product designs uh, that I have made from scratch, uh, that could be another video. Let me know if you'd like to see that in the comments. Uh, but that sums up this uh, top five most useful 3D prints in 2020. Uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you in the next one. See ya.